We have talked in the past about how Windows keeps on doing funky things with their updates, including encrypting your computer by default, even on the home edition in the upcoming release of Windows 11. The question we have to ask today is, do you have your recovery keys? Thanks for checking out this video by Switch to Linux. If you like this type of content, please make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Leave us a like and a comment down below to help with the algorithm. And with that, we do want to talk briefly about do you have your recovery keys? Now, I realize that many people do have to use Windows for different purposes, and that's okay. And you should be protecting yourself if that is your reality. And in this case here, what is going on is if you already have your computer encrypted, and some of you honestly may not know if you are encrypted or not, a recent update in Windows is booting you into your recovery mode. And if you do not have your keys, you will not be able to get into it. Now, of course, Microsoft is really nice, and they store your decryption keys on their um on their uh, their servers, which basically means if uh, somebody comes in with a warrant and seizes your hard drive, they can just go to Microsoft to get your decryption keys. Isn't that exciting? Well, today we want to have a brief look at their article, which is discussing what's going on here. So a Windows update may present users with a BitLocker recovery screen. Now, usually you only see the screen if you make some substantial hardware changes to your system or you enter the PIN number uh, incorrect too many times on Windows Hello and a few other odd things can trigger it. In this case, it happens to be an update. So the update triggered the BitLocker recovery screen and it forced people to have to enter that bit cut the bit locker recovery at the time of the reboot. So your screen is going to look so very similar to this. So you have to enter the recovery key, which is going to be a long string there. Now, of course, what they have made it available is that you can go online and they have a website, aka.ms and slash my recovery key, you log in with your Microsoft ID, and then that will show the device name, the key ID, and the recovery key, allowing you to get in and access your files once this is done. Now, this is uh, being, uh, this is happening on the following systems, Windows 10 or 11, from um, and Windows Server 2022, Windows Server 2019, Windows Server 2016, Windows Server 2012 R2, Windows Server 2012 and 08 R2 and 08. And so these particular systems, if you already have your device encrypted, that appears to be what is going on. Now, you should always go ahead and have these keys on hand. So you can check if you are already encrypted by going into settings, privacy and security and look at device encryption. Depending on the type of system, if you've had a pro edition or an enterprise edition, it's probably already been encrypted for you by default. If it has not been, you have the option to encrypt it. Or if it is encrypted, you do have the option to decrypt the drive as well. And for me personally, what uh, encryption is really good. It is something that we should do, but encryption is never something that should be hoisted upon you because you have to know your decryption keys. You have to know all of the ways to get into that drive because if something goes haywire, you have to be able to get into your system. Now, usually the TPM modules on Windows computers will log you directly in. The recovery key is only needed in cases that something seems a little off. In this case, this update triggered that for pretty much everybody. And so encryption is really good, but the purpose of encryption is to prevent people from getting into your system. And if Microsoft servers has your recovery keys and their servers are not zero knowledge, Microsoft employees who have access to that information can get in and access your recovery keys. That is true. And that kind of, in my opinion, defeats the purpose, at least partially. Sure, if somebody steals your laptop, they will not be able to get in without some access code. Of course, if you don't even have a password and you turn on your system, then it will decrypt itself automatically and it doesn't really matter. I actually have a computer that that was the case. We had, uh, we actually had encryption set up. I didn't even know encryption was set up on the computer and I never set in an administrative password, which was just me being stupid, you know, 20 years ago or whatever that was, uh, 15, maybe it was 15 years ago. I don't know. Windows seven computer. 
And I did find out that the drive was encrypted, but there was no password. So if somebody happened to steal that computer and turn it on, they could still access everything on that drive. That certainly is an issue. So with that, what the purpose is here is we want to alert you that if you haven't pushed those Windows updates yet, if you've held them back, go ahead and make sure that uh, you have those decryption keys if you haven't already done that. I think they might have mitigated this by now, but it is just yet another warning that Microsoft is doing weird things and hoisting some errors on your system. I mean, this came out right when the CrowdStrike stuff was happening. And some of the CrowdStrike recoveries sent you into the same BitLocker recovery screen as well. In that case, it may or may not be quite as easy to get into there. So it is always important to make sure that you know who has access to the keys, what the keys are, and things like that. So, of course, uh, here's our, our brief summary once again. Uh, you can check your encryption status at settings, privacy and security, and device encryption. And you can gain access to your recovery key from Microsoft by logging in online, and then they'll give you those keys. Of course, that means that they can give anybody those particular keys who happens to show up with some, you know, no-notice no uh, warrant of some form or another, which I personally am against. I think that that should be... Uh, restricted. So uh, ultimately here, I think that we should be encrypting our drives, but we should be encrypting our drives in such a way that does not have those encryption keys online somewhere where they can be accessed. They could be breached. They could be hacked or they could just be handed over to people. That is certainly a fundamental issue. Now, I encrypt most of my drives here on Linux. This streaming computer is not because everything that's on this is you know just going to public YouTube anyway and, and other uh, video channels, YouTube, Rumble, Odyssey, BitChute, all those types of things. But every other device that I have which has useful information, all of those different devices, those all have encryption set on them. So if you were to walk off with it, you could not get in. But those keys are also not available online anywhere that if you might be able to fish your way into my online account, you still cannot recover my keys. So that is just a, a brief notice and an update. Of course, I do that on any pretty much any Linux distribution these days. You can encrypt by default. And this is why I recommend people use Linux instead. It gives you the encryption model without tying those encryption keys into an online account, which could be accessed by the company, um, a malicious actor, or other things like that. So with that, if you like this type of video, go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so and uh, leave us a comment or and a like and or a dislike if you think it was stupid information. I don't know. <laughs> Let me know your thoughts down below. With that, thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.